right, Dr. John O'Reilly said all our fail failures are prayer failures, and so we want to be mindful to pray, amen, to pray, pray, pray. Hold your hand up if you need one, if you need a, a prayer sheet, the, they'll get one to you. Of course, we'll pray for all the different ministries and so forth on the front there. And then you open it up, and we've got just a whole list of um, people here to pray for, and um, certainly want to be mindful of those who've, who've went home to be with the Lord. We do have uh, Mildred Farr's um, memorial service this coming Saturday at 11 o'clock over in a cemetery outside of Magnolia in the Emerson area, and continue to pray for those families who, one of our missionaries, uh, Brother Ed Klein, lost his wife, Rita, and missionary Bill Coley, uh, missionary to Kenya, Africa, is a good friend of ours, and known him for a long, long time, and, and he passed away, so pray for the Coley family, that God would be with them, and, and bless them, and, and keep them in his wonderful care, and that would be a blessing, okay? Um, and, um, let's see here, um, I want to continue to pray for Miss Lydia's brother, Mike, Mike Cook, and he's going through cancer treatments. And then um, uh, Leslie Darden uh, has cancer, and so pray for her. And then uh, Miss Peggy uh, Hazel Townsend fell in rehab. And Peggy Thompson told you recently she had fallen, hit her face on the floor, slipped on a rug. And then Glenn Wilson is under hospice care, and we've been praying for Glenn. And then uh, Miss Renee, uh, Brother Travis, and Miss Renee come over from uh, Hampton. Miss Renee um, had her surgery, and she's recovering. She was able to make it Sunday, so that was a real blessing. And and uh, of course, I want to pray for her. And then also we have Tanner Birchfield's um, uh, Tanner and Claire's um, wedding this Saturday. If anybody would have an interest in going, we'd be happy to let you follow us or ride with us or whatever. And that'll be at six o'clock in the evening the barn at Big Oak Ranch, Oak Hill Ranch in Magnolia. And uh, so anyway, uh, that would be a blessing. Tanner grew up in our church and got his signature in one of my older Bibles where we led him to the Lord when he was a little boy. And so that was a blessing. And, and um, so you pray about that. And then uh, the young man, Zach Campbell, that was here Sunday, he's a blessing. And pray for Brother Zach. That God will give him souls for his labor uh, as he goes on college campuses and tries to reach people for the Lord uh, on secular campuses and got to have a lot of guts to do that and uh, he's had real good success at it in a bunch of different places and a lot of our preacher friends uh, are starting uh, ministries on college campuses in their areas through Brother Zach and he comes in and helps you do the legwork and, and get it all set up and all that so that's a blessing so be praying about that and uh he taught Sunday school Sunday. I thought he did a great job. He's 24 years old, but seemed like he had wisdom beyond his years. Amen. Just a great, the content of his uh, message during Sunday school. And Division One football player. And uh, there in the state of Pennsylvania, 300 Division One athletes were there. And the man that spoke to him spoke on suicide. And um, Zach and his mind growing up on the mission field in the Philippines as a boy, he just thought that, you know, that wouldn't really be an issue. He thought maybe two or three people might would stand up and dozens of people, Division One athletes, stood up that they had contemplated suicide. And by the way, suicide's not the answer, but God used that incident to break Brother Zach's uh, heart. And uh, the Lord really started working. He had a football coach that was mean and kind of rough, and God used Brother Zach and the quarterback to kind of turn the heart of that, uh, that football coach. Isn't that a blessing? That's how God takes man. You never know when Lord, he's working all the time, and, and he used that to kind of turn that football coach. He's just backslidden football coach and being rough and all that. But God uh, used Zach's testimony and, and the quarterback's testimony to turn that uh, turn the coach's heart back to the Lord. He got right with God and all that. So a lot of good came out of Brother Zach's college days and all that, playing football. And, of course, uh, he was having over 300 brothers ready, uh, just setting up chairs at college campuses and, and just inviting people to come. And just uh, unbelievable have a lot of people saved. Uh, and like I'm talking about like at Harvard and a lot of, you know, the University of Maryland and, and uh, Kentucky and, you know, main, main universities. But, you know, uh, that's a blessing. So just continue to pray for him. Brother Mickey Hollers is having him come there. He's doing a, doing a, helping them get started at college. Got some college students there in his church, and they're starting a ministry. Anyway, we know a lot of the same people. And um, Brother Hardy, what's it, Hardy, uh, the patriotic guy, um, yeah, is it? What is it? That, what's his first name? Chuck. Yeah, Chuck Harding. They're out of the same church in Maryland. And so that's a blessing. And, and so anyway, he seemed like a good guy. So we, we love Brother Zach. And 
he enjoyed his time while he was here with us. But anyway, somebody else have a prayer request tonight? Somebody you want to pray for? Casey? Laura Greer. Okay. Okay. Laura Greer with a stroke. Okay. Yes, sir. Brother Bob, okay. Brother Bob always needs a lot of prayer. And uh, somebody say amen right there. Amen. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> All right, Miss Peggy. Okay. All right, let's pray for Miss Peggy's daughter, Frida. Be having a upper and lower GI next Thursday. All right. Uh, Roman? Okay. All right, Dylan and Bell will be coming in, and, and uh, Dylan's going to be our Graduation speaker, isn't that a blessing? Going to speak at graduation this year, and, and uh, we're excited about that. Brother Bojack and Brother Jag will be graduating, and so we thank the Lord for that. Yes, ma'am. Bubba, okay. Yeah, I'll pray for Bubba. The Lord knows which Bubba it is, too. Aren't you glad we serve a God that's all-knowing? Amen. Amen. He knows exactly which Bubba it is. So what are you putting on your prayer sheet there? I said, pray for Bubba. Amen. That's what I'm putting down. Amen. We're in Arkansas, ain't we, Brother Freddie? Yeah, Brother Freddie? Yeah, I just want to thank the Lord for uh, pizza today. Amen. Pizza, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Praise the Lord. That's awesome. I'm reading a story about Tommy Tillman. He's a missionary to the lepers in, um, in Thailand. And uh, when he first got saved, I mean, he didn't really have any knowledge about anything, you know. And, and I'm just a baby Christian, but man, he wanted to witness to everybody. So he thought, he heard about this meeting they were having in a football stadium. And, and he went there, and, and um, anyway, he didn't know it was Jehovah Witnesses. And um, so he was like, they were teaching things he'd never heard, you know, like in his, you know, Sunday school class and so forth. And so he started talking to different people. And one of the guys asked him, he said, uh, do, you know, do you know, are you Jehovah Witness? And he says, no, no. He said, we were at a Jehovah Witness meeting. <laughs> and so anyway, he, it was funny. He was quoting scriptures to him, you know, and what, what about this verse? And what, what do you do with this one over here? You know, anyway, he didn't realize he was uh, uh, in the wrong place, but anyway, uh, he thought it was a great idea to have a big meeting at a football stadium. He thought, wow, that's going to be awesome. I'm going to learn more about Jesus. <laughs> at least he had enough sense to know he was in the wrong, wrong place. Amen. So that was a blessing. But uh, what an interesting read. All right. Um, how many have an unspoken request, someone or some situation? Okay. All right. God bless you. Well, let's take a little bit of time, and we're just going to uh, spend a few minutes in prayer. And uh, I was talking to a guy today. He said, you know, um, uh, all the churches in Smackover are, are closed on Wednesday nights. And, you know, really, honestly, most churches are dark tonight, but I'm glad we can come and spend a little time with the Lord in prayer. Yes. And uh, my house shall be called a house of prayer, and that's what we ought to be known for is praying. and we ought to be a praying church. And so as um, long as I'm living, pastor and all that, we will have a midweek prayer service. Amen. Just, just feel like it's necessary. And, you know, if we ever realized and ever got a hold of how powerful prayer is and how essential it is, uh, we'd probably be doing a lot more to pray and than, than we do. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it really does make a difference in our missionaries' lives. And and um, I'll preach a friend over in Longview, Brother Gray, was preaching Sunday night. 
I'm just being sensitive to the Lord. You know, he had his message already and everything, but God changed his message. He wound up preaching on suicide, of all things. Suicide. The Holy Spirit led him to preach on suicide. And Dalton Smith called me and told me that after the service was over, a lady who rode an Uber to church had insulin and a needle, and she was going to commit suicide after church that night. And she came and brought all that stuff to the preacher, and she didn't commit suicide. Because suicide's not the answer. But it's good to be sensitive to the Lord, amen? And it makes a difference when you pray and you walk with God so that you know which way to go, amen? We don't know, but God does. It's always best to listen to him, isn't it? And I'm glad that lady uh, didn't take her life, amen? Dalton Smith told me that story. He was all excited because, you know, just, just th that Brother Gray would deviate, you know? Sometimes we get messages and we think, you know, we get locked in on them, but you got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, I mean, You really do. you got to let him lead, and so... Anyway, I'm glad that lady is, is still with us today. Amen. That's a blessing. All right, let's take a little time. We'll pray, and then we'll uh, close out our time of prayer here. I'm going to get Brother Bobby Tucker to come up. Brother Bobby, come on up here. And folks on the live stream and all can hear you pray, and that'll be a blessing. And be praying. We're going to be upgrading on our, our we got some popping going on with our uh, sound system and all that. And we're going to be doing some upgrading on all that here soon. And You know, a lot of our stuff around here has just gotten old, you know, and it still works, but it's got issues, amen, so we're going to be able to upgrade soon on that, and I'm excited about that. So, Anyway, we'll get rid of all the popping, but uh, Brother Bobby's going to come pray for us. Amen. That'll be a blessing. Brother Bobby, from Southwood, I didn't remember to ask this, but if you could pray, our meeting is going to be in three weeks.
Amen, brother. Okay. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you again for the privilege we have to come to your throne of grace, Lord, because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we do lift up Brother Freddie as he travels in Pleasant Valley Church there in Oklahoma, Salisaw, Oklahoma. Lord, we pray that as they do their inflatables and go out and witness, Lord, that you just give them a great day, Lord, that souls will be saved and people baptized and lives changed, and, and we just praise you for what you do. Father, bless those that we've mentioned that have health needs, Lord. We're a needy people, and Lord, there's so many needs. I can't say them all, but Lord, we're thankful that you know each and every need. Lord, just bless this service in a special way. And we just praise you for what you do. We love you, Lord, and thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yeah, come on, Brother Lee. Um, a couple more I keep thinking about. Pray for our graduates, all the different graduates. You know, we got graduates from kindergarten and high school and college and so forth. Just pray for all the graduates this time of the year and kind of going to the next phase of their life that God will be with them. Also, my sister-in-law, Debbie, um, my brother-in-law, Steve, one of his aunts passed away in Texas, and, and um, he was close to her, I know, and uh, they'll be going to Texas for the funeral this next week. So just pray that God would comfort them and bless them, okay? All right. Good to see Miss Lisa and Mamma. I know you all were here last week and all that, but uh, they've been living out of the motel for months and months and months and all of that. And now you get, are we in the house now, getting settled in, finally? In there. That's good. All right. Well, praise the Lord. And uh, so that's a blessing. I mean, they've been waiting on the home, and they sent the wrong home, and they anyway all kinds of issues, and and one of them homes you have to put together. Amen. And uh, so you got to get all that right. But anyway, they're getting it right and everything. But we're glad to see them back. We sure sure missed y'all. Love y'all. Yeah. Let's stand hymn number fifty-seven. Fifty-seven at Calvary. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died. So imploring, turn to Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so my liberty at Calvary. On that last, oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, brought it down to man oh the mighty gulf that God did spend at Calvary mercy there was great and grace was free pardon there was multiplied to me there my burden so found liberty at Calvary Thank you. you. May be seated. And um, 
I see. Brother Bojack, can you come and help me for just a minute? If you're here tonight and you didn't get one of the Mother's Day books Sunday, and you're a mama, we'd like you to have one. We may not. We may, let me see. how many, who, who didn't get one and you'd like one? Hold your hand up. There's Miss Janie, Miss Ellen. Miss, and then let Mama on them. Oh, we're going to be one short. Okay, I got one. I'll have to get you one. One, Miss Billy, I'll get you one, okay? All right, go ahead and pass those others out. They were using that girl's voice, but he said he passed these out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and give that one to Miss Billy, and I'll get one for Miss Ellen, okay? And then we got one more for Miss Donna back there. Let's see. Can y'all share one, Miss Lisa? Let, let them share one. And then I'll come up. If I come up with two more, I'll give you all your own, okay, Memo? That'll be good. All the way back to, uh, how many you got, Brother Bojack? One. Okay, give it to Miss Donna Allen, and I'll get Miss Ellen one. Miss Allen's around here all the time, so she'll be easy accessible. Okay. All right, so I owe, Miss Peggy, make me a note. I owe Miss Billy, did you get one? Okay. So I owe Mamaw one, and we owe Miss um, uh, Ellen one. Okay. See, we'll see if we can see if we can come up with two more, okay? All right, that's a really good book. My Sunday morning sermon for this last week is I, I borrowed that, stole that from that lady, and it worked out real good. And um, anyway, I knew most of the ladies probably wasn't going to read the book anyway, so uh, I knew I was probably in pretty good shape on that. But then I saw my mother-in-law had hers out like she'd been reading it, so I thought, whoa, maybe some of them will read it. That encouraged my heart. And Stephanie, you have that prayer letter with you or no? Okay, can, yeah, yeah. I'll let Miss Stephanie read, or you want Miss Janie to read, or you want to read? Miss Janie? Okay, we'll get Miss Janie to read. All right, Miss Janie, get your reading shoes on. we got a missionary letter for you to read. All right, this letter comes from Brother Tony Mullinex's favorite missionary, and that was Wes and Rachel Gasway, and they were sent out of Brother Bobby Thompson's church in Calhoun, Georgia, and, of course, he knew, um, he knew Miss Rachel, you know, and knew both of them, really, but... Anyway, I always wanted to know how the missionary to Egypt was doing, and so I'd tell him about it. But he said, Dear Pastor and praying friends, can you imagine being a missionary to Egypt? And when they had lifted up, his, uh, up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only, Matthew 17, 8. No matter how many times I discuss with Yusef what uh, time we will try to meet, I can always count on one thing. He will be very late. So an hour after our discuss time, I was still waiting and finally uh, relegated myself to just enjoying the moment. The kids in the street had found a piece of uh, styrofoam and were cleverly making shapes of toys they wished they had. Ironically, none of them made a smartphone. The hustle and bustle of everyday life in the desert is a nice reprieve from the constant pressures we place upon ourselves. At times, this pressure may be induced by the decision that faces families like us the world over. We versus me, we represents the people the people Christ freely gave his life for on the cross of Calvary. Me represents the ministry we frequently try to take credit for or represent. Choosing we means, we do, uh, means doing things to help others that are unwritten, unseen, never talked about, photographed, or have funds raised for them. There will, be never, uh, there will never be a, a, a hashtag campaign, blue check, or, or viral post to justify the sacrifice clearly stated putting them first means they only see Jesus life lessons two of the most important holidays for believers worldwide are only three weeks apart this month setting the dates of Ramadan uh, which depends upon lunar calendar that cycles through every 33 years consequently this is one of the busiest times we get in ministry but a couple of times every 33 years is nothing to complain about. Also, Orthodox Easter comes the week after the Western Gate. We faced, uh, re recently faced a we versus me decision that involved helping families celebrate these two events. We did not ask for direct assistance during this season, as so many people just helped us with the baskets and blankets projects. But that we, uh, but that as it may. Uh, be that as it may, we could not turn a blind eye to those whom the Lord had placed in our hearts for fear of God's warning. Uh, Ezekiel 34, 3 and 4. Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed them not. The diseased have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, neither have ye 
brought again that which was driven away, neither have you sought that which was lost. But we force and uh, with cruel, but with force and cruelty have you ruled them. Nonetheless, the Lord knew the need. Numerous churches and individuals sent extra support, allowing us to touch nearly 800 families thus far by helping with a holiday meal bag and new dresses, uh, a, a bias for the ladies and girls who need one. Relationships, not handouts, are the goal of our ministry. With world food prices and inflation at record levels, the love of Christ has never been shown more clearly. Praise and prayer request for three ladies who accepted Christ as their Savior in the month of March. For the church planners, as we finish off the sophomore year of Bible college, for new converts to see the need and biblical truth to follow in believers' baptism. And I appreciate every soul that the, the Gazways have reached in, in the country of Egypt. All right, Miss Danny, you can come. And, uh, Ms. oh, Miss Stephanie's not back in. I thought she walked back in. Oh, she went out that door. She, uh, come on up here, and then you'll be ready. Yeah. She probably blew it up, so uh, blew the copy up so Miss Janie could read it. Okay. I was, uh, Brother J.D. was talking about the importance of prayer and the power of prayer. And as we were headed out today, the... Brother Freddie had asked that the Lord would guide us where we were going, and the Lord just prompted us to go to a park, just kept pushing me towards the park. And when we got there, there were two adults there, and there were a few kids, and a, and a mom, and, you know, I was like, there's not a lot of people here. Maybe we should just go somewhere else. But it's like, y'all go ahead and pass tracks out. Let's go talk to these people, and then we'll move on. And it was um, some Mormon missionaries that had set up a, child, a, ch a sidewalk display, and they were teaching the kids. And um, Catherine was able to lead a boy to the Lord that is interested. We talked to his mom. He's interested in coming to, uh, to church. But um, I was just really encouraged through that. I, I don't know about y'all, but my husband is a soul winner. When I married him, that was the ministry that the Lord led him into just a few months after we were married. And uh, even when I was a teenager, I would get nervous when I had to share the plan of salvation. And I've done it hundreds of times in front of classrooms and different things. And every time it comes time for me to witness, I get nervous. And I don't, I really don't like to do it. And here I've been doing it 25, 30 years, more, more than that since I was 13. But every time, I, it's not, I, I don't want to do it, but it's something God's commanded us to do. And I don't know, I just saw in a new light today there's people giving their lives to go out there and spread lies to keep people from believing the truth. There's people that are indoctrinating people to send them to hell. And here we are in a church in America where we're free. We've got tracts. We've got the Bible. And when it comes soul winning time, we don't go out soul winning. We don't tell other people. We don't care enough. We're, we're not willing to, to be obedient. It's not something that God just told some people to go do. When there's an opportunity for you to go soul winning, I'm so excited and thankful for our young people, how they've caught on in the last few months. And they're eager to go out. And that's how we should all be. And I'm, I'm ashamed. I'm not saying that I'm doing a good job at it. But... Prayer makes a big difference as we're going out. It's not our skill at how we give the plan of salvation. I mean, we need to know what the truth. We need to be able to, to give. the. And if you don't know how, go with someone. They'll show you how. And I know y'all have had a lot of preaching about this lately. It's been a big focus of the church this year. But how many of you have done something to make a difference? How many of you have stepped beyond your comfort zone and you're doing something about what Brother J.D. and the church has been pushing. I want to see this church growing. I, w I want to take as many people to heaven with me as I can, and I'm ashamed that I don't do better than I do, and I, I want to do better. But I also want to encourage you all to keep praying before you go out. The last two meetings that we did in Dwight, Illinois, and, and I'm sorry, I'm crying. I'm, just, I'm so thankful to be able to see the Lord work. But in Dwight, Illinois, and in Midland, Texas, those churches, they got together and they held prayer meetings before we got there. 
While we were there on Saturday nights, it was a prayer meeting. On Sunday morning, as church started, it was a prayer meeting. Every night before the revival, there was a prayer meeting. They wanted to see God work. Did you know we had nine people come forward on Sunday morning? They students from a, a rescue home that just decided that morning, that day, to come. And nine of them got saved. It was teenagers from an emergency rescue facility. Kids without parents, orphans, no telling what they had been through. And uh, in the service, nine of them got saved. And then at the next church we went to on Sunday morning, prayer, the power of prayer, there were 24 people that walked the aisle Sunday morning, adults, teens, kids, wanting to be saved. One service. God had been preparing their hearts before someone had, um, a, a teenager had passed away with an asthma attack. And the pastor there had preached the, the funeral. And God was working. He was moving. But it, it was because people were praying and people were being faithful to go out and, and tell others about Jesus. So I just want to encourage you as my home church. I just want to encourage you to seize the opportunities that Brother J.D. puts before you to go out, do something about it, get out of your comfort zone. Take a track, go with somebody, and tell somebody else about Jesus. You can do that this week. You can do that next week. You can maybe just this month decide, okay, I'm going to go out one time and go tell somebody about Jesus. It'll make a difference in your life. And it'll make a difference in somebody else's life. And it'll make a difference in our church, an eternal difference. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. We can't find the letter, but I think the Lord just wanted Miss Janie to give a testimony. Amen. That's good. Thank you, Miss Janie. We're going to have the ushers come forward now. And uh, Brother Freddie, if y'all can get ready, get maybe the kids or whoever seen, if y'all have seen, maybe that'd be a blessing. Can we handle that tonight? Okay. If you need an offering, you'll look, slip your hand up. And Miss Janie, thank you for that testimony. And, and, um, you know, the Lord's using, uh, uses other churches to affect other churches, amen, and that will be a blessing. And I'll tell you what, let's just let them sing. Is it okay to let them sing during the, I mean, during the offering? That will be good, and we'll just kind of kill two birds with one stone. Can you all do a couple, Brother Freddie? Yes. Be good? Okay. Um, a lot of illustrations going through my mind, but um, of just how our church, you know, the Lord's using our young people, what's been going on with them the last three or four months. We've kind of had an energy and excitement that you have maybe when you get back from youth camp. And the Lord's kind of used that to um, uh, encourage other churches, amen, and their teenagers and to pass out tracts and all of that. And we've been trying to kind of share what God's been doing here with others. And, and uh, uh, they say so when it's better caught than taught. And so uh, Roman said to me the other day, uh, my grandson, we were talking, and he said, Papa, I can't talk as good as some people can, but the Lord's blessing a lot of people are being saved. And he, you know, like he couldn't, didn't have an answer for it, and I didn't either. I just said, Roman, it doesn't matter how good you can talk. It's just the matter that you are talking and God's blessing what you're saying. Amen. He blesses his word, doesn't he? And we know Roman can talk, but God's using him, amen, to help other people. So that's a blessing. So that's why that's you want to do it. By the way, too, you want to steer, you know, whatever you got, give it to the Lord and let him help use you to help somebody else. Brother Hank lets, uh, you got pictures to prove it. Brother Hank led somebody to Christ. It was awesome. Brother Bobby Tucker led, led two people to Christ. It was awesome. Not there today. Yeah, and praise the Lord. He said he's one here and one here, and then three at one. You know, sometimes you get three for the price of one. And I'm not, I'm not naming all of them, but I'm, I'm naming just three that we're here. I'm looking at right here. And thank God for these young people that are that are going and giving. Luke and Tillman, man, they're a blessing, man. They're, you got you, you want to get out of the way, man. They're coming. They're going to give you a track, amen. And uh, you don't want to get hit by Tillman. And he's going to he's going to eat you like a deep Cuban missile, amen. And uh, so it's good, and uh, we appreciate these young people. The girls, we, we brag about the girls, and we got to feed the girls. we got to, but the, the, the girls are amazing. We thank God for it. Amen. Uh, David, can you pray for us? Ask the Lord to bless offering. Dear Lord, thank you for this day, and thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for us. And please move in this service, Lord, and bless the offering, the gift, and the giver. And... Um, Bless the singing and help us to go get people and reach them for you, Lord, because you're coming soon and help us do our best for you. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Stand for Jesus. 
us don't be ashamed stand for jesus claim his name for he loved you on a rugged cross with arms out open wide stand for jesus he's standing by your side God is looking for someone to fill an empty place, to live a life of holiness and defy the world's embrace. To count all gain is lost for the glory of the cross. It's a city on a hill for everyone to see. Stand for Jesus, don't be ashamed. Stand for Jesus. Claim his name. For we love you on a rugged cross with arms out open wide. Stand for Jesus. He's standing by your side. Will you be the one to go and tell them of that place where lost souls spend eternity and of the judgment they will face? Will you point them to the cross where our Savior took the loss? It's his story on a hill for everyone to believe. Stand for Jesus, don't be ashamed. Stand for Jesus, claim his name. For he loved you on a rugged cross with arms out open wide. Stand for Jesus, he's standing by your side. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. For we loved you on a rugged cross with arms out open wide. Stand for Jesus. He's standing by your side. Stand for Jesus. He's standing by your side. Minus one of our best singers. Amen. Abby's at grandma's, all right? The devil is a rustler, and many are his men who ride the range in valleys, damning souls and lives with sin. If you're a Christian cowboy, then saddle up God's word and start the trail of riding away. From the devil's herd Swing in To the saddle Christian cowboy Start riding and start riding hard Search the canyon of sin For the souls of lost men Bring in the strays for the Lord What else do you do by gold? Are you the devil's hand? Or is the Lord your foreman And the rugged cross your brand? Is hell your destination or heaven your reward? You're working for the devil or you're working for the Lord. Into the saddle, Christian cowboy. Start riding and start riding hard. Search the canyon of sin for the souls of lost men. Bring in the strays for the Lord. Now when the roundup's over and payday rolls around, when all the lost are branded and all the strays are found, Swing into the 
saddle, Christian cowboy. Start riding and start riding hard. Church to Kenyan, I sin for the souls of lost men. Bring in the strays for the Lord. Into the saddle, Christian cowboys. Start riding and start riding hard. Search the canyon of sin for the souls of lost men. Bring in the strays for the Lord. Bring in the strays for the Lord. Bring in the strays for the Lord. Thank you all. It's a blessing. If you have your Bibles tonight, turn to Colossians chapter number 3. Colossians chapter number 3. And that will be a blessing. Colossians chapter number 3. Colossians chapter 3, and I'm going to begin reading in verse number 1. We've, we've been through this passage and, and um, giving you a lot of stuff here, a lot of definitions and stuff. So I'm just going to read for a little bit here in Colossians chapter 3, verse number 1. The Bible says, If you then being risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Well, that's going to be a great day, isn't it? Yes. Verse number five, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. And we've preached several messages here, given the definitions of all these different things that are listed here. Mortify means to kill. Therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which sake or which things sake, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Boy, I'm glad that uh, I was of my father the devil, but he ain't my father no more, amen. And I'm glad for that. What a blessing. Verse number seven, in which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. That's where we all used to be in that category, okay? And uh, we were uh, children of darkness, children of disobedience. But now ye also put off all these. Well, he gets right down where we live at, doesn't he? He says, anger. Wow, i got to put my anger off? Man. 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 Wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Stop lying. Stop your filthy communication. Stop cussing. Yeah. Amen. We just got to stop all this stuff. Put that filthy communication out of the same mouth. The Bible says blessing and cursing are not. Listen, we need to get all that junk out of our hearts. And verse number 10 says, so that gives those things to put off. And then now he says, and to put on the new man. Boy, I'm glad I'm a new man now. I'm a new creature in Christ. And old things are passed away. All things have become new. And put off the new man. Put, uh, and put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. You know who you ought to be trying to be like? And that's like Jesus. Amen. I want to be like Jesus. Amen. And uh, I want you to be like Jesus. And verse number 11 says, Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. And man, there's no, no social standing, no ceremonial standing, all that stuff's done away with, but Christ is all, amen. I love the little chorus, Christ is all I need, and he's more than enough. Verse number 12, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies. These are things that we're to put on. Kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. Is there anybody that you have animosity or ill will in your heart or she makes me sick or some of any of that kind of junk? Man, you need to put all that stuff away. Man. And you need to let it go. You need to forgive. You need to forbearing one another, putting up with each other, your brothers and sisters. 
and so forth, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you. Did you, forgive, did you deserve Christ's forgiveness? No, but he forgave us anyway. Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. So they may not even deserve your forgiveness, but you forgive them anyway, because that's what Jesus did for you. Then we have this little list of things here. Above all, above all these things, put on charity. So charity kind of covers everything, which is the bond of perfectness, or however you say that, in a Christian home. And then we give you some of the ingredients in the Christian home. The ingredients, and it says, and let the peace of God, the peace of God rule in your hearts. And... Um, Let's see, I don't know if I turned my mic on. Yeah, there it is. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. And uh, a truly Christian home is a place where there's peace. And we talked about that. And peace with God and, and, and the peace of God, okay? And we just want peace ruling in our, in our homes. And we talked about our home's not a battleground. It's a refuge. It's a place, not a place of fighting, but it's a place of fellowship. It's a place fortified against the devil, okay? And uh, what a blessing to read about the, in the Word of God about the peace of God and to understand that. Ingredient number two is thankfulness. Verse number 14, above all these things, there, verse 15, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. And it says, to, which also, uh, w- to the which also ye are called uh, in one body, and be ye thankful. Be ye thankful. And so thankfulness is an ingredient in the Christian home. And boy, I want peace in my home, and I want thankfulness in my home, okay? And uh, in a Christian home, we find thankfulness, Okay. And it's real easy sometimes to become ungrateful, you know, and gripe about things. And I don't like that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's a bunch of junk, y'all. We got a lot to be thankful for. Man. There are people in other parts of the world in war right now. They don't even know where their next meal's coming from. And we want to gripe and complain about something. Don't be that way. It's easy to become critical. And, and criticism's contagious. And it leads to an unthankful spirit. And I mean, God's, God's good. We sing songs. And I just want to thank you, Lord. Our youth choir's got a lot of songs on just being thankful. Yeah, I just want to just want to thank you, Lord, for every time you heard me pray. I just want to thank you, Lord, for always being there. Boy, he's always been there, hasn't he? He's made the good times out of the bad. He's been the best friend I ever had. Just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So in a Christian home, people don't gripe about what they have to eat. They thank God that they have something to eat. In a Christian home, people don't gripe about what they have to wear. They just thank God that they have something to wear. In a Christian home, they don't murmur and complain all the time about one family member or another family member. They just thank God that they're all still together and living and enjoying one another's company. Hey, be thankful for the time that you have together as a family on this earth. Enjoy it. When you come to the end of your life, those days that you've wasted are gone and we can't get them back. But a Christian home is ruled by peace, uh, the peace of God, and it's a place of thankfulness. Ingredient number three in the Christian home is the Word of God. Look at verse 16. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the Word of Christ, the Word of God, let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. Boy, what a blessing. Ecclesiastes 10.10, wisdom is profitable to direct. Many homes don't have God's direction because they don't have the Word of God dwelling in them richly. You do not have a Christian home if you do not have it full of the Bible. Full of the Bible. Listen, hide God's Word in your heart. Take time to read the Bible with your family. This will help you and your children as you seek to bring them up for the glory of God. Pray for your family. When my grandson Jag was eight years old, I remember him praying for Momo. Momo was going through her cancer treatments, and Jag was just a little boy, and he was praying, God, God, please be with Momo. That's good. And I appreciate the prayers of little kids. I appreciate the prayers of everybody. I mean, you just appreciate people that have a heart to pray. And many say they have a Christian home, but if these ingredients... Peace and thankfulness and the Word of God are not found in it, then we can't call it, we cannot call it a Christian home. Wow. God, please give me some of that peace. God, I I need to be more thankful. God, help me to be more consistent in the Word of God. God, I really do want my home to be a Christian home. Please help me to adjust my life to make it that way. 
the ingredients in a Christian home. Then we have the instruction in a Christian home. Look at verse number 16 again. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. All wisdom. Wow. All wisdom. Boy, I'll tell you, I need God's wisdom, don't you? Teaching and admonishing. What are we trying to teach in our homes? What are we teaching our children, our grandchildren? To admonish means to counsel against wrong practices. It means to caution or advise people. We're to be teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So, if I was to give you some instruction for your home, I would say that you need to have Christ-honoring music in your home. You need to have Christ-honoring music in your home. Wow. I'm not really a singer, but I've got a song in my heart. I love to sing. I love to sing. What a blessing. What a blessing. I love to hear children sing, grandchildren sing, my family sing, our church family sing, our youth choir, our boys and girls. I mean, I I just love singing. It's good. Speaking yourselves in psalms and hymns and, and spiritual songs, singing and mel- making melody in your heart to the Lord. We don't go for contemporary music here at Bible Baptist Church. We just sing the old songs of the faith and don't go for, you know, the. We don't, have to, we don't have to bring all that stuff into the church to have good music. We don't have to do that. We don't have to try to be like the world. I don't put my finger up and say, well, I wonder what, wonder what the big churches are doing, you know. I wonder the ones with the strobe lights and black lights and all that stuff. I don't care what they're doing. They can do whatever they want to do, but we're doing what we want to do. We're going to stay true to the old hymns of the faith. They mean, if it's good enough for Grandma, it's good enough for me. We're not trying to attract a crowd that way. We just give them youth choir music, give them old-fashioned, you know, we're just singing good songs. We're non-contemporary. Not into all that praise and worship stuff. No, I'm just going to sing for the Lord. I'm not singing for man. Not singing to glorify myself or have somebody come in to glorify themselves. No, we want people to sing for Jesus. Like they sang a while ago, I'll stand for Jesus. Yep. Talking about old fashioned Christian homes. Christ on music. Another one, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, instruction in a Christian home, whatsoever you do in word or deed. And there's a difference between word and deed. People say, I'm against adultery, and then they laugh at the television programs that promote it. Whoa. Hey, our children are watching. They're watching us to see, you know, how, how we process things. Well, it's not that bad after all. They're laughing at it. We say we're against dirty language, but then we sit and watch television shows, and they laugh at, 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 laugh at filthy jokes and things like that. It's not, it's not right. Our children, again, they're processing. Well, Daddy says he's against it, but he really isn't against bad things. He laughs at it. We say no alcohol. And you can't even turn television on without an alcohol commercial coming on. Isn't that terrible? I mean, all the ball games, we like to watch the ball games. And man, all, man, all these uh, athletes are just terrible role models. Brother Freddie, they're terrible role models. I mean, great athletes that our boys and girls and young people look up to and then they're doing beer commercials. That's so sad. It's not right. Wow. Accountability to Christ. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all to the name of the Lord Jesus. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. We need to teach our children to be accountable to the Lord. We need to teach our children to be accountable to the Lord. Let me get to the part where I'm going tonight. I want to give you this real quick and uh, the individuals in a Christian home. Look in Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 18. Verse number 18 says, Wives... Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. So God has a word for every person uh, in the Christian home. He has a word right here in the context of the home and put all this bad off and mortify this and put that off and then put this on and clothe yourself in this. So it's all in the context of the home that God created, the ingredients of the Christian home and so forth, the instruction in the Christian home. Now we have the individuals And God has a word for every individual in the Christian home. For the wife, the word that God gives is submit. Ladies, I didn't write the Bible, but I do preach it. Wives, 
Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. That means it's right, it's proper to, to do that, okay? And uh, for the wife, the word submit uh, is given. And uh, we're not too far from the word submit uh, if we think about the word serve. The word serve. And uh, serve and submit. And look in Ephesians chapter, or, well, Ephesians 5.21. I'll just quote it for you here, read it to you. It says, submitting yourselves one to another talking to the husband and the wife in the context uh, in Ephesians, uh, submitting yourselves one to another, husbands and wives, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So the wife is to serve the husband, and the husband is to serve the wife. Are, are, are you seeing what I'm saying? We're to submit to each other. We help each other. We love each other. We serve each other. And the wife is to submit to her husband, and the husband is to submit to his wife. So there's a mutual submission in our loving care for, for one another and for our home, okay? But the wife is to submit to her husband's leadership. A lot of ladies get all bent out of shape about that. When, listen, ladies, that's not, that's just, that's wise to follow the Bible. You know, we had that, that movement, you know, the women's lib movement, and women trying to dress like men and all that stuff, and getting the butch haircuts and all that stuff. It's just a bunch of junk, y'all. Don't, don't follow that stuff. Let's just follow God's Word and see what the Bible says. So, again, this mutual submission in our loving care for one another, but the wife is to submit to her husband's leadership. And if children are, 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 are reared, if they're brought up in a home where the wife does not submit to her husband, then the daughters in that home will become wives who will not submit to their husbands. Whoa, you get the trickle-down effect. Monkey see, monkey do effect. So we've got to be careful, don't we? Yes, we do. And uh, so wives uh, submissive, uh, a wife who's not submissive, submissive is teaching rebellion to her children by her behavior. Don't do that, mamas. And it's not only a sin against your husband, it's a sin against your children. There are many women who should say, God allowed me to be born a woman. And God gave me a husband. Because God commands me to submit, I'm going to submit. Your husband may not be all that he should be, I understand that. But God's word for a woman in a Christian home is submit. And again, if you have a wife uh, who is a Christian but does not submit, then you really don't have a Christian home, okay? And I want my home to be Christian. And Miss Deanna and I, we work together. I mean, we really do. We work together. We, we've, we've got different responsibilities within the home, and we just work together. I unload the dishwasher. Why would I do that? Because it hurts her back to unload the dishwasher. I don't have to unload the dishwasher. She's not telling me or making me do that. No, I, I willingly submit. I want to serve her and help her because it's hard for her to. And so then she loads the dishwasher. She loads it real fast, and she's good at that. And you know, I'm just saying little things like that. We just work together. Are, are y'all with me? Sometimes I'll, and I'm not to, to, I mean, you know, toot my own horn, but I'm just saying that sometimes I carry the the the, the clothes out of the dryer and I'll, I'll set them on the couch and. It helps her because, you know, just the bending over and carrying a load of laundry and, and I'll carry it put to the couch and then she'll fold it, you know. And, and as a rule, I don't normally fold unless she's out of town or something like that. But, you know, we just work together. Are you, are you understand what I'm saying? We work together because we love each other. Not always just button heads and all that. No, we have divided responsibilities. I don't know how much soap, Brother Freddie. I'm not sure exactly how much detergent that you're supposed to put in loads of clothes. And so if she's out of town, she does all the washing you know, and I help. I can put it from the washer to the dryer, but I'm not real big on doing the laundry, so I'll call her and say, hey, I'm washing white clothes. You know, how much of this stuff do you put in there? And she'll coach me. What is that? We're just working together. Why? Because we love each other. Are you listening to me? We love each other, so we work together. Mutual submission. Husbands. Verse number 19. God has a word for you. Husbands. Love your wives and be not bitter against them. The word for husbands is love. The word for husbands is love. The word, word for wives is submit. Now, love is a commitment. It, it is possible for a man to be so committed, so in love to his wife, that he doesn't allow his eyes, fellas, listen to me, he doesn't allow his eyes to wander. Because he loves his wife so much, he doesn't have to let his eyes wander. He loves his wife more than he does all these other little Susie Q's out in the world. 
all these others, uh, you know, that wear all the makeup and try to look real pretty and attract the eyes of men. He doesn't have to do that. Why? He loves his wife more than he loves, you know, looking at somebody else. He doesn't want to do that because he loves her. He's committed to his wife. You can be a Christian man and be married, but if you do not love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, you do not have a Christian home. It might be Christian in name, but it ain't Christian. And God knows. Loving our wives as Christ also loved the church means to make the commitment to them that he made to the church. What did he do for the church? He died for the church. He gave himself for the church. Hebrews 13, 5 says, he said, I will never leave thee. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Colossians 3, 20, children. Verse number 20, children. Bet you can't guess what the word is for y'all. Obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Wow, the word for children is obey. Wow. Wives are to submit, husbands are to love, and children are to obey. Let's say that together. Wives are to submit, husbands are to love, and children are to obey. Let's say it again. Wives are to submit. Husbands are to love and children are to obey. People say, I don't understand the Bible. Really? Really? You don't understand the Bible. Okay. What do you not understand about the Bible? The Bible says, wives are to submit, husbands are to love, and children are to obey. I understand that. Pretty clearly, and when the plain sense of the Bible makes common sense, then seek no other sense. Children are to honor and obey their parents. Honor has to do with attitude. Honor has to do with attitude. And obedience has to do with action. You know, you can take the trash out, but you can take it out with a bad attitude. That, that, you're, just, you're, you're not honoring your mother and your father when you do it with an attitude. You can pick your room up after you've slammed the door or whatever, you know, but, and you're doing it with an attitude. And even though you're obeying, you're dishonoring your parents because you've got a bad attitude. As children become older, there's a conflict between becoming adults and obeying mom and dad. As long as you depend on mom and dad for your sustenance, for your food and shelter and money, you need to obey them. Children are to obey their parents. After you become adults, then you're to honor them all the days of your life. You're to honor them by the way you live your life. I've often thought about it like this. My mama's been in heaven all these years, but if I'll please the Lord, my mama will be proud of me. Now, I've just found that. Mamas that love the Lord, you please God and, and, and you'll make your mama proud. Years ago, I was preaching in jail, and a big lady, pretty, pretty big-sized lady, I mean, a lady you wouldn't want to meet in a, in, a, in a dark alley or a lighted alley, for that matter, a lady I didn't know, I mean, I thought she could probably whoop me if she wanted to, and uh, one of them kind of ladies, and one night in jail, she came up to me, and she said, I want to get out of here so I can go home and take care of my dad. And tears were running down her cheeks. And you know, it touched my heart. That I mean, she wanted to go home and take care of her dad. And I thought, wow, that's a blessing. That's good. She wanted to honor her dad. And I thought, wow. You got one more word here and then we'll be done. Fathers, look at verse 21. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. How do fathers provoke their children to anger? Uh, you know, dads, we provoke ch- our children to anger by having unrealistic expectations. There are no perfect children. Don't put them on a pedestal and think that they can do no wrong because they're, they're kids. Miss Stephanie couldn't find the, the letter that I'd given her, but she's got it somewhere. I'm sure it'll turn up, but... It's a story about a mama writing from a nine-year-old girl's perspective, and, and it, it really it talks about that, about 
Mama, I'm, I'm nine years old, and you know, let me be a nine-year-old. You know, it's, it's, really, it's really a good little read. And sure, we want our children to do right. Yes, we want them to do right. We want them to live under the right standards, and, and, and we don't, don't want to give in. But let a four-year-old be a four-year-old. They're going to grow up soon enough. But sometimes men and women, women want to relive their, their failures through their children. And they want their children to try to be everything they are not. And the Bible says, fathers, provoke not your children to provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Have you ever seen parents who were so loud and screaming and, and throwing chairs and hitting the gym wall at a ball game that you felt sorry for the kid? I'm not naming any names. Though I could. I told my preacher friend that we had him on our prayer list. And that we were praying for his anger issues. He started laughing. He said, you're right. I think he toned it down for maybe one game. That was encouraging. But I'm not going to name any names. How many of y'all have ever seen somebody like that, though? They were out of, the parents were out of control, and you felt sorry for the kid. It's a good kid, but the parent, man, wow, so much pressure. And, you know, man, I don't like that. Fathers, provoke not your children. They provoke their children by hypocrisy. Listen to me now. You provoke your children by hypocrisy. Listen, children lose confidence in their parents when they talk out of both sides of their mouth. When you act one way in the car on the way to church and all week long and then you come to church and you start trying to act like you sprouted wings or something like that, you know. I don't know about sprouting wings, but anyway, you start trying to act like an angel. When parents wear a mask and pretend to be something that they're not, the children, they can see right through that. And it provokes the children to anger, to anger and discourages them. Fathers provoke their children by having an unforgiving spirit. Wow, allow your children to get over the, their mistakes. Do not constantly remind them of their failures. And I've heard parents say, you're nothing but trouble. We've always had problems with you. Don't say that kind of stuff to your children. It might be true. You might be speaking the gospel, but please don't say that. You have no idea the long-term effects those kind of things have, have on your children. I'm telling you that. It's the wrong way to talk to your children. Fathers, please provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. God connects anger and discouragement. Anger driven inward produces discouragement. Some kids grow up and they really can't be angry, but it, they get, it produces discouragement in their heart. May the Lord help us to be parents. Our, be the parents our, our children deserve to have. Tr children should obey, yes, but fathers should not provoke them. Wives should submit, but husbands must love them. So we need to say, Lord, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord, to do my part. If we were working a puzzle, Lord, help me to be the piece of the puzzle that I'm supposed to be to make our family a, Christ, a Christian family. Lord, I might not be able to, you know, this and that, but help me to be the part of the puzzle. Help my part to be right. Wow. Our time on earth is, is so short. It's hard to believe I'm fixing to be 62 years old. Our time with our families passes quickly. When I hear about a family that has a child they won't forgive or, or some family member that they won't forgive, a family member never comes to Christmas, no birthdays, no birthday parties. When the home is disrupted and there's anger and unforgiveness, no one wins. May God help us. Wow. And make sure you're saved. Take time to pray with your children. Take time to read the Bible with your children. What kind of home am I living in? 
Do you desire to have a Christian home? God, help us tonight. Father, we love you tonight. We sure do. Thank you for the word of God. I'm glad you got a word for husbands. Lord, you told us to love. God, I know I've fallen short a lot of times in my, in my marriage and in my life. But Lord, I pray you'd help me to keep making adjustments, Lord, to be better for you, to, to love the brethren, to be pitiful, to be courteous, to be kind. God, help our dear wives to be submissive, Lord, and, and God, uh, uh, not to be loud and bo- boisterous and all that, but Lord, to have a meek and quiet spirit, which is inside of God, of great value, of great price. And Lord, our older ladies, that they would be a pattern for our younger girls and younger mothers on how to be keepers at home and and how to be good mamas and how to love their children, how to keep their houses and all of that. Lord, help us now tonight. Lord, help our children here at Bible Baptist to to obey, to obey. Lord, you said rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And Lord, we don't want to raise rebellious children. No, we want children that love the Lord. Help us, Lord, now. Please, tonight, bless the invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together.